and it's going to be about now and well it's going to be black forest so we are in for the long haul quite obviously and looking at the civilizations we have Winchester Selt or Kelt, however you want to pronounce it, warrior is Mongol, whereas Lavihet is Spanish. And for the Jedi team we have Fitz Chivalry as Mongol, Chaos to win Spanish and Yube is Celt. So we have a pretty much a mirror, so it's just going to be up to both teams. How are they going to develop overall their gameplay? So looking at the map, it seems kind of funny. I'm just going to turn off the fog of for us, obviously it doesn't serve any purpose. But the team on the left side, that's Jedi, are having kind of tricky base looking at it and it is especially going to be difficult for potentially trade route later on. But first, let's have, have a look at the wall in at the early game, which is basically the only action in the first, I don't know, 15 minutes <laughs> game time or whatever. So yeah, this is a bit of a wall in between the red and purple, that's basically done. And at the bottom, blue is finished, whereas he isn't having any kind of opposition in there so far. Or rather, she isn't, but oh well. Oh well, she did encounter quite a lot of problems at the bottom. She has lost the Billy to Wolf and also to quite a lot of yellow. And it seems like that yellow will definitely try to make use of this. Yep, they are basically occupying the whole choke point just by themselves. And this is a pretty huge bonus, especially looking how this is actually a pretty big hill. So yeah, this might be quite hard for the opponents right now for blue to actually retake. And really, this is going to be quite problematic overall. The wall will be placed by her about here. So potentially kind of easier with all those trees here, but still, it's really pretty bad for her because of the lost Willy. And of course, really, I have to reiterate, this hill is probably going to be quite important for the later game. In the middle, we see uh, yet another Biff will fight here between red and green. And it seems like that those two Willys, yeah, two Wolf is here as well. Oh, how is this going to develop? It seems like that Green is losing a Willy. Yeah, he definitely is. Warrior has lost yet another Willy. And, oh well, this is pretty horrible bad start for a weak team. Because obviously they have lost two Willys. They haven't walled themselves in. And this is giving a pretty huge advantage to the Jedi team. I'm not exactly sure why he isn't trying to protect the Relic as well. <laughs> yeah, I don't really get that. But, well, he seems... That Chaos to win is right now going to be quite happy and if he just went a bit further and actually built a wall here exactly like Yellow did, that could have been quite a good coup because obviously he would have stolen a very valuable stone from the opponent and really would have covered this whole choke point. It's really curious that Red didn't go for it, especially when he had two villages here and he had a pretty good idea that Green wouldn't be sending any extra villages in and yeah, this is, I think, an uh, opportunity missed right there. So looking somewhere else, blue has already finished the wall here, whereas looking somewhere else into the bases here and finishing the initial thought. I was just talking about how it's going to be hard with the trail line for the Jedi team because obviously they have nothing. They cannot really run from this side to this side or whatever. They will have to let, have trade route from somewhere here. Oh, this is pretty horrible. So I would be guessing they will be starting somewhere here and they would be running potentially about here, I would say. But really, this is going to be quite complicated and quite a lot of choke points. And this one is probably going to be quite heavily used by the trade cards. And I'm not really seeing anything nice for them overall. We have heard the dock. And since we are clicked into Winchester, it's going to be somewhere at the top. Yep, here we see a dock, but just one. Actually, just one short fish. Not exactly sure that's going to be all that efficient. But looking how it's very close to actually the choke point, it's definitely going to mean a big advantage with potentially in the next age, or rather in the Imperial Age, with Elite Cannon Galleons. Well, this is definitely going to help the Berserkers team. Some interesting stuff at the back, a bit of a gold, not really all that much. Yet another water with just one short fish here again. And some other pools. We have just the one at the bottom. Oh well, that's short. Actually, five short fish. That's quite a lot and definitely worth it for Fitzchevalry to go for it. And definitely one that he'll be quite happy about. He actually doesn't really need to go for the deer. If he wants to go for potentially mill or whatever, just going with some of these into, into the dog, he could have just went for the short fish because quite obviously the short fish are the fastest to get the tree source even more than the deer. I'm not exactly sure what the plan is here, but would have been a bit more optimized, but I don't really think it's going to matter all that much because they've already gained quite a huge advantage by killing those two villages from their opponents. Out of wars in the middle. Yeah, this double triple war. 
That's pretty nice indeed, but Chaos Twin actually has to use those Swedish because, because obviously so far they have been kind of idly in here. Otherwise, how are we looking with some Wallin? Yeah, Lavi is just trying to actually make sure that this kind of wealth hill is hers, but definitely have to be careful about this wolf. Does she have a mill or a loom? Yeah, she already has loom, so right now with two villages she should be pretty much safe, especially with the scout being right in place and ready to help with the potential defense against those wolfies. So yep, right now retreating back and we are moving to actually have a look at the other team's bases. So Vic Winchester right now, uh, together with his whole team, are going to be having a much better trade route because they will be building about here potentially, or maybe just at the back. Yeah, they could probably take it right here, but I'm a bit worried that the trade cards might be a bit more in danger from potentially the attack of their opponent. So, well, yeah, they, have, they will have to be careful. But if they are, the trade route from here all the way to the other side out here, well, they will definitely have to widen this choke point, would be pretty sweet for them and a very good advantage for the later game. But let's see if they can actually cope with the early disadvantage. But looking how we are actually on Black Forest, I'm kind of thinking they will be having quite a lot of chances to make up for that. And well, do we see something interesting here? Well, looking at the relics, we have two on the right side with two on the left as well. So it seems like that only one in the middle is going to be making the difference. And that was kind of inexplicably actually not claimed by Chaos. Uh, but it's not really all that far away. So if he wants to go for it, he will definitely be just deleting the palisade wall and capturing it. Especially looking at how Warrior used houses in here. So he won't be all too keen to delete them to push, to push through. This is also kind of saying you, or rather telling you, that the most important battlefields are going to be here at the top and also at the bottom. Yeah, those two choke points at those hills are going to be quite important for both of these uh, sides of the map. As for the favorites here, yes, I would definitely say that Vix should be favorites because Winchester is basically 2200 or something like that. So definitely the strongest player here. Uh, as for Warrior, he's something like uh, 2k as well, at least in team games, definitely. Maybe 1900 2k, not really sure at this point. And Lavi Hat is pretty great in team games, so definitely... I would say that Vix are about 2k team overall, so that's a pretty strong team. And as for the Jedi, if I have a, if I had a correct look, Jupe is something like 1700, whereas Chaos to Win and Fitz Chevaro, Chaos to Win is something like 1750 or 1800, something like that, when Winchester is right now finishing with a nice stone wall. And the last one from the Jedi, Fitz Chevaro, is 2k, I think. 2k plus, if I remember correctly. So definitely a pretty good chance uh, to make a pretty strong stand against Vix. But yes, I agree that the Russians are the favorites here. Some interesting stuff. Stone being gathered by Fitz Chevalry, but that's kind of understandable. He's the only one. Or actually, no, Chaos to Win is also advancing pretty late into Feudal Age. So they have opted for a bit stronger builds in the, in the next stage. Oh the Dark Age rather, I wanted to say, and they will be having a bit stronger echo when advancing into the Castle Ages, which is definitely the thing that everybody will be going to do, and I think that might be a reaction actually to the lost Willies from both Warrior and Lavi Hat at the very beginning. So let's see if they, will de if they will be having a stronger play overall. A lot of shorefish here, that could definitely be worth a dock as well. So it will be seen if somebody takes advantage of this, but if they had it or rather wanted to, I would be kind of guessing that they would be already having a dog here. So it seems like no no such interest from either Yupa or Chaos to win. Well, well, well. So what are we going to see somewhere else here? Uh, looking back at this wall here, even though these trees uh, are seen or are looking like quite a decent help to Lavi Hat, I would be really thinking that it's kind of risky and she needs to build like a stone wall right behind that because obviously once you go with onagers or other even siege onagers in here you are going to be just making a very easy hole through the wall here uh, or right into the middle of Lavi Hat's base and she should definitely be very careful about what is happening in here and well we're going to see what's going to develop here but look at how she's Spanish she should actually be quite careful about this and potentially will be having a pretty decent amount of bombard towers in here right when she can in the Imperial Age and this will be quite a, de quite a decent defense overall. Yep, you can see that stone walls are right now coming in from both the yellow and the blue player. Whereas, somewhere else, this is already also going to be a stone wall from Lavi Head. 
and not much reinforcement happening anywhere else, but I'm thinking it's just a matter of time before La Vihette finishes here as well. At the top, that's kinda curious that Red is actually not reinforcing yet. He's still having just one palisade wall. That is kinda risky, because it opens you to some kind of shenanigans in the early age. Potentially, or rather, maybe if Winchester felt like it, felt like it you could just go for some... I don't know, a few petards in the <laughs> castle age. <laughs> and it could be quite surprising to go through and basically level the TCs or any kind of economy from his opponent pretty soon, but that's not really something that happens all that often. And that would be a bit of an all-in. I'm not really thinking that Vix will be approaching the game so carelessly. A lot of fishing boats here, five from Fitzchevalry, whereas Winchester is having just three on the pond at the top. Because obviously he doesn't have all that many fishing was here, he just did have one, so right now he's making use of at least the fish traps. And looking at the economy overall, we have the best uh, for Yupe, who is having 40 villagers, with Chaos to win a fifth chivalry, uh, 31, uh, both of them. Whereas for Vix, we have Lavihet with 30, which is the least in the game, and Warrior 34, 45, right now jump in, jump in and Winchester at 37. So let's have a look around, because everybody is in Castle Leeds, obviously. So who is having how many TCs? It seems like three for Winchester at this stage. And you can already see that they will be trying to make use of this patch of the map to have as, as long trade route as they can. And so, three release, or rather, ah, sorry. Three TCs with Build Barrow for Winchester, whereas the Pocket Warrior is having four. As a Mongol, okay, that's definitely understandable, because Mongol Mongolians need a pretty strong echo. And Lavihet is the last one, and she is having one, two... So far just two. Or rather three. Okay, sorry, I just missed this one. <laughs> and I'm gonna have a look if somebody is maybe slinging. And nobody is slinging. Okay, so it's going to be just... And just easy going for everybody, and literally decided by skill of the... Respective players. Second TC for a rat. Or is he having a third someone? Yep. Three TCs for rat as well. The pocket for Yupa is having one, two. And a third TC at the bottom. Rather fourth TC, so four TCs for the cells. That's quite interesting. And the Mongolian player is having three. Yeah, so far three TCs, four TCs as well. So it seems like to me that Fitzgerald together with Yupe are going to be having slightly better games than their opponents because from Vix, Warrior is the only one so far who is having four TCs. And I'm just waiting when Vinch is actually gonna have four himself, but he seems to be quite content with the three and potentially advancing slightly sooner into the Imperial Age and we'll see if that's going to be happening and something interesting overall. Lavihet is having still just two, or rather three, or is she maybe developing into some more? One, two, three, still just three. And looking somewhere else, we already see that she's trying to prevent some kind of surprise attack from her opponents and will be seeing the attack pretty soon, but it might be maybe a good idea to actually place outpost somewhere else uh, to protect against potential uh, each on edges and whatnot. But she seems to be having a three line pretty nicely covered with the TC and also the lumber camp here. Somewhere else on the map, not much here, in the middle. I'm really just curious why Red isn't reinforcing. He isn't reinforcing here in the middle. And, ah, finally at the top he is, so that's probably just a question of time. And the window of opportunity potential for Winchester is, right now, basically being denied. So, yep, that's it. And, oh, this is slightly curious. If he's going to forget about this one, one square here that's potentially a way through, that could be a pretty nasty surprise for him if he really forgets, because right now uh, behind the house he potentially doesn't see it. <laughs> so let's see if actually he finishes or not. And I already hear some kind of trade cards, so that's Winchester trying to secure the trade, yep, and he's using uh, the longest trade route possible from this top. And yeah, it's just a question of time. I think it's going to finish somewhere around here. It's going to be the second trade line for all of the players. So fourth TC right now for Lavihead. Having a pretty good echo right now. With still the four TCs from the green player. And still just three from Winchester, who is right now going for heavy plow. And looking at the other upgrades, Fifth Chevalier is definitely going for a lot of echo. As he has just researched quite a lot of extra upgrades with Wheelbarrow coming in and gold mining. Warrior also gold mining. And well, quickly we had Wheelbarrow. Okay, so it seems like pretty much the same. And looking at the villages right now. 
69 for Winchester, or rather 70 with Warrior, it's the same, Lavi had 65, Verias fit Chivalry is having 75, Chaos 73, and Yupe 86. Well, the Jedi are definitely booming pretty hard. Pretty hard overall. 1, 2, 3, 4 TCs for the red player. Ah, uh, and you can see that he actually noticed in the choke point here, and there's going to be no surprise whatsoever. But still, this is kind of easily mm, chopped through with such on edge, on some siege on edge or whatnot. So I would be very glad if he actually fold with some wall around here. Uh, this is definitely going to be quite risky, and look at how Winchester is actually sold, and he's going to be having the on edges from their team. This is definitely going to be quite a huge risk for him. So, oh... And actually, at the same time, I'm not exactly all too happy about all those houses here. Uh, because quite obviously, if they can be leveled at the same time, this is definitely going to develop into quite a huge problem for Chaos to win, as he will be housed basically instantly. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, that's 10 houses, that's 50 pop. And if he loses that, he loses this in like a minute or two, well, good luck fighting against your opponent then. <laughs> It's not going to be easy at all, and yep, this is definitely the problem that I was pointing out earlier for Chaos to win, that he wasn't reinforcing the wall soon enough, and he's right now being breached, and that means that Warrior is trying to somehow recapture uh, the map advantage, or rather the choke point in the middle. So, can he somehow successfully finish here? It doesn't seem so. Bit of a really fight times two, uh, but look at how actually those red police are how that he should be super careful. Well, right now, with the wall here, or rather the gate, that's not really going to be happening all that soon. Well, well, well. Well, definitely couldn't vault. Rather, go went for a bit of wall. But as he has enough stone, well, he definitely has. So I'm not exactly sure why he didn't top for a wall, but this is kind of risky from him. Uh, so obviously, he's letting the scout in, and that's potentially a problem, because it can give uh, Yupe... Yeah, it can't. <laughs> I was just thinking that it could potentially give you a line of sight on the trade route for their opponents. But, well, right now that's not going to be happening, so it's going to be blind as for everybody. At the bottom, not much happening, just the lobby head drop in the siege workshop. So that seems like you'll be soon seeing some kind of attack or other attempt at an attack. Should look looking at the very nicely placed castle from Fitz Chivalry. That's very nicely placed because it's going to protect the tree line here and it's going to be near impossible to get through all the all the forest here at the very back. It could definitely be possible, but it's going to take so much time that it's going to be very easy for the opponents to notice. Mangurai coming in with a plethora of upgrades for absolutely everybody of all colors. And it seems like that Teal, together with Red, will be fighting on the top front. Oh, so is actually Green going to be there as well? So far I wouldn't really think so. It seems like that he's a very intent warrior to come in through the middle. Uh, well, that might not be all that easy, but looking at how here's just one line of walls so far for Red player Chaos to win, it might be really not that hard to push through, potentially with just a few petards or... Just simply some siege for chop units, like siege rams or whatever. Castle for the defense, quite obviously. Yet another castle for Celts and the Vikings, basically to cover the tree line. And well, that's kind of curious that he's much more thinking about the tree line rather than actually capturing the choke point. But look at how Red is actually having so many houses here. I'm kind of thinking that he, rather I'm right now talking about Winchester, that he's thinking that the attack is not going to be going through here anytime soon. At the bottom, we finally see some on edges from the south player moving to the south. And, well, that basically means that there's not going to be all that much of an attack or a double from Yupe at either the top side or the bottom. It's just going to be him supplying as many siege weapons and some potential wall traders as possible. So are we going to see some attempt to go through the trees here from the orange, or rather from the teal player together with yellow? Well, we'll see pretty soon, but this castle from Lavi Head is very nicely placed and is definitely going to help with the defense overall. Right now shooting at the wall. Well, it's definitely going to take a bit of time, but it's not going to be all that bad overall in the long run. On edge, each on edge already being researched. I'm just going to recheck if somebody's been slunk. No, nobody's been slunk. 
nobody's been slung and in the middle we see a bit of a reinforcement but uh, kind of curiously from the red player on the right because he's trying to protect from lavi head whereas he's still leaving quite a lot of room for a warrior to go through as he basically has to go just through a one line of walls which is definitely not that hard and we'll see if warrior will take it or not or if he's going to check or rather join at the bottom or at the top so far, not really seen any kind of action. Just waiting for the siege on edges and basically some surprise push through. And this might be happening here because this is a very, very thin line of three line. And might be a pretty decent surprise, especially because Labihat isn't prepared yet. She does have cavaliers almost and will be going for paladins pretty soon. But well, she doesn't have any kind of unit so far and she definitely needs to build. Yeah, she isn't building yet, just going for the Cavaliers, and, but she does have quite a, enough resources and she will be having quite enough for Paladins very soon. Paladins also being researched for Chaos, that's going to be one of the problems at the top quite obviously. And this is just a storm waiting to happen. Albert also for Winchester. He's definitely preparing for the Paladins from the Spanish player on his side of the map and Paladins from Lavi Head also coming in right now and Bombard Towers for Chaos to Head or rather Chaos to Win. <laughs> Combination of Lavi Head and Chaos to Win and here we go. Yeah, here we go with the push through. This is definitely one that they will be very happy about as there's literally no defense from Lavi Head ready yet. He's just now building her first three Cavaliers going into Paladins and that's quite a lot of actually Siege on Edgers. And with the cover of all those Mangu dice, this, this is going to be quite deadly. Because if they can get to the tra trade line, they could be destroying it even before it actually came up. So yeah, let's see about that. Quite a lot of siege. And are they mounting siege at the top as well? So far they aren't, but this is exactly what I was talking about earlier. With Winchester trying to push through and basically deleting all the houses from Chaos to win. So I'm going to switch into Chaos uh, so that we see... On his houses. Yeah, right now he's pretty terribly housed as you can see <laughs> at the very top. And well, Laviat is trying to make sure that she gets rid of all those onagers. But I'm kind of missing them from the salt of the victim, which is uh, who is Winchester. And that could definitely help here. Because obviously, right now, uh, Laviat doesn't have enough army and it's just, she's having quite a lot of troubles getting rid of all this. She can, especially right now with the upgrading through Paladins. But once this castle is down, this is going to be quite a secure point of attack for Fitzchivalry together with uh, Yupe. And well, we'll see if that's going to be all that easy for Labihead to hold through. Castle is obviously down, we have seen that a bit earlier. But with this one up and quite a decent strong army here at the bottom, really, this is going to be not easy for Labihead to hold off. Let's have a look at the top, what's happening in here. Got quite a lot of, obviously, barracks for the Celt, as obviously uh, the Celt units are pretty good. Especially combination of wood traders together with those halberdiers is going to be quite deadly against all those paladins from the red. And red is already employing the standard bombard tower spam uh, as a defense, and also trying to employ a bit of walling in the middle here, trying to reinforce what is happening here. A bit of trebuchets here, trying to get rid of all those ski bombard towers and building with just village bombard tower. One village of bombard towers might not be all that enough, but I'm still waiting for the energies here. Each engineer is being researched for Winchester. But let's have a look at the bottom, where Blue is really having quite a hard time defending against all those Mangu dice that are pretty nicely prepared. And you can also see a barracks from the deal player joining with just not the siege on edges, but also pretty important halberd years. So yep, this is a pretty tough situation as this is developing into something not really nice. And finally, Warrior is the one who will be joining in the middle or rather at the bottom with a bit of castles and Mangurizo himself. So this seems to be developing into proper two versus two. Well, let's see if this is going to be all that nice. Right now the Mangurais are going to be quite deadly for all those siege on edges. So let's see if Warrior can micro properly. They seem to be just biding their time and basically trying to choose a bit better battlefield under the castle potentially with some extra siege. Uh, but right now we are coming in. Not exactly sure why Warrior isn't targeting all those onages. Right now he finally is. A lumber camp? Well, that's quite gutsy. <laughs> 
let's go with Gutsy from Fitzgerald. I would be maybe guessing that he could be dropping a castle, but he's dropping a Lumber Cannon on, on his opponent. Well, that's definitely a new strategy, and well, is that going to be helpful? Not exactly sure, but <laughs> he's definitely thinking that he can stand, or rather, uh, con conquer this part of the map. So far, he's not really wrong, because the army is obviously up pretty strong from Fitzgerald, and they did have the advantage in the numbers, and this amount of Angorais is definitely bigger than from Warrior, and this is quite a difficult situation for Vex, and they will definitely need some extra siege if they want to push through here. I would be guessing at this stage, especially with the extra protection from the castles, and yep, they are fighting in a pretty hard spot, and what's all that more dangerous is all those trade line trade cars going around here, and that's very close to the trade or rather very close to the battlefield, and I definitely don't like that. So let's have a look at the top, how's it going, not really anything substantial here. Just a lot of scorpions, which is not a half bad reaction actually, because look at how we just is using just a whole lot of just a lot of infantry together with those siege managers. This is definitely the correct unit, especially looking how good defense the Jedi team at the very top have. So I'm not really having uh, all that much of a faith in Winchester pushing through here just by himself. So I'm kind of thinking he will be holding in just a moment because he will be pushed through very soon with some pretty good shots from those bombard cannons and on just and whatnot and the strength of the paladins. And looking at the bottom, yeah, definitely winning the Jedi here. Looking at the bottom, it seems like that we are really seeing the Jedi having an upper hand even at the bottom battlefield. Well, that's a pretty good job. We see a bit of a Okay, so that was just Wolfies trying to help uh, the big team. And to help the big team. And are they actually going to kill us a few billies here? Well, with the loop, with the loop probably not. So let's go back to the real battle, where Lavi Hat is right now finally having a pretty decent amount of Paladins, and it seems like that Green is also having a pretty decent amount of Mangudais. And I would be thinking that this might be exactly enough army to repel their opponents, but they need to be careful because obviously the spam of buildings from from Yupe together with Yellow is quite strong, and if they can drop this castle together with those Siege of Workshops, that's going to be building army right in the opponent's base, and that's definitely something that Wix cannot stand stand a long battle God damn it, stand a long battle off. At the top, you can see that Red has finally broken through any Oh, it actually seems their way through around this wall. Well, that's kind of not ideal from Winchester. Kind of sloppy walling from him, but obviously it really seems like they have been going through. But just not to say that it's really his fault. It might have been just a few units going through the wall, or rather letting the opponents through the wall. And it really seems like to me that Winchester is right now recognizing that he will be forced to defend as much as he can and basically allow their, his allies to go into the game, or rather get back into the game at the bottom. I'm going to have a look what's happening here. If it's some kind of drop or what. Well, everybody still seems to be in the game. So no, it doesn't seem like anything like that. So we are just going to wait for some kind of pause. Well, 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 that's a lot of pause here. Cap tram for Chaos to win. Just in. Conscription, obviously, for Yupe Masonry, for Lavi Hat, and Fortified Wall for Winchester. Well, is that really worth it? <laughs> it's already basically broken through, so it's not like it's going to be making a quite a lot of difference as you would have hoped, but he's probably thinking that he can somehow uh, keep this gate alive and potentially build a second wall here. But really, with the very easy way through the forest on the left, I'm not exactly thinking it's going to be making all that much of a difference. Whereas at the same time you can see that Chaos Twin is reinforcing the wall here. And he should be probably pushing a bit more into the bombard towers, because if he doesn't, or rather, if he does, he can potentially help a bit more. Uh, this is right now talking about you at the bottom and basically go full in on the bottom and that would definitely help push the point even more into the battle happening at the bottom. Bit of bombard towers from Lavi Head, that will definitely help in the defense. 
And if they can actually put enough of those bombard towers in the position here and basically relinquish the town center and all those villages here, this might still be a pretty good spot for them to defend. And we are on post, and here we go. So I'm going to have a look if there's actually a hole. Yeah, there really is a hole. Okay, so <laughs> Winchester did make a sloppy hole, unfortunately for him, and that's definitely going back to bite him, because if all those paladins actually notice, well, I'm not exactly sure if Chaos Too Many is actually noticing, because if he did, he could have just sent absolutely everything in and basically wrecked all the economy. A lot of idols just by right now finishing the gold, and this is oh well, this is so not ideal with the town, with the castle right now down for Winchester. It's going to be all that easier for them to push through. So let's see if oh, those onagers can land in some good shots. To those onagers, one. Oh, ooh, that could have definitely been a good shot in there. But all those bombard cannons are pretty good counter and one shot. Yeah, one dead. But one dead here as well. Okay, that's a pretty huge amount of siege. And finally, Red has noticed fully that he can actually go full in uh, with Pinchester right now, trying to mount some defenses. But really, this is basically better happening right inside the trade route. And that's exactly a pretty big problem that I was mentioning at the very start of the game. At the bottom, though, it seems like that Lavi had, together with Warrior, have been able to stall the advance of the opposing forces, which is a pretty good job by them. But they're not going to really advance any further anytime soon because of these three castles. This castle is going to be built pretty soon. A lot of villages coming in. And yeah, it's not like uh, Wix are having any kind of very strong attack to go and punish the potential problems that you pet together with, with Shivari are having with the reinforcements so far. But really, this is so far, or rather very quickly and unexpectedly, I would say, uh, going back into Wix advantage. So let's have a look at the back at the top where Winchester is definitely having a pretty hard time defending, but he is doing a damn good job because he has been able to somehow... Oh, well, there is a way through, through the stump here. Yeah, right now <laughs> Winchester noticing with the palisade wall, so that's a pretty good job on that. And he can definitely call this pretty much safe on the left, and on the right it seems like that he's basically doing a pretty good job with building all those extra houses and buildings there as well to protect his home base and it seems like that uh, Chaos to win didn't really take proper advantage of the opportunity that he has been given and well that's kind of a shame for him and might be coming back to bite him because obviously he could have wrecked the economy of his opponents with that many paladins in the economy that just kind of sad news for you but looking at the bottom we have seen that Vix a warrior together with Lavi had been able to stall the attack and right now are just waiting for the correct moment to attack on their opponent for the base same could be also said for Fitzgibbon with Yupa. They are basically just waiting to have enough army to go for the offensive here. And they definitely need some extra help from managers. Oh, oh, oh. Warrior not paying enough attention. Not paying enough attention here, so it's just right now lost to pretty crucial units because obviously they need some kind of onages in here. As without them, they are in a pretty, pretty tough spot as they have kind of limited options how to get rid of the onages from their opponents. Oh no, no Lavi had, don't do this. Oh, without the extra hand from a warrior, this is, oh my. Okay, so Lavi has just thrown all her army away in just one assault here, but it's not really going to matter all that much because of those extra uh, bombard towers being here. And if she can replenish fast enough, let's switch into her point of view. She's having 165 and she's actually switching to the top. Oh well, that's interesting. And that's basically the reason, because she probably wasn't paying enough attention at the top. And right now she is at least going to help her teammate Winchester. And well, this might be a pretty good option, or rather opportunity for Winchester to get back into the game. He right now needs all the siege workshops and all the buildings here, so that he can basically spam units as far as fast as he can. <laughs> this wall here, but... <laughs> Just denying any kind of purpose at this point, having the holes at both sides. And yeah, Winchester is just sending all his units basically to die under all the fire, fire from the bombard towers. And Red is not even men rather minding that he is fighting paladins against halberdiers in this case. At the bottom, this is right now a pretty strong attack. Pretty strong attack and pretty strong claim on Wix bases right now, even though Lavi had has been able to 
basically repair the losses that she had on the paladins there quite strongly we see a bit of a sneak on the bottom and that's where all the grain army has been because obviously i have been looking for it and i didn't see it anywhere on the battlefield but is it really going to be enough it really might be because the, the attack from yellow together with steel is really slow it's really slow and this could be quite surprising as I'm not really thinking that they will be all that aware what is happening here and I'm right now talking about the Jedi team so where is the trade route coming from here trying to clear the trade route by the onager here but well here we are through with absolutely everything yeah wolf is the fear uh, the first to actually notice and that's oh my this is so close this is going to be so easy and where are the units from them well, very far away, very far away, having fun deleting buildings, which is not really all that successful. With pretty good shots with those onagers, he could be just calling the attack long enough. And here we go with the slaughter. We just need to get rid of the castle fire, which is about here. And yep, let's have fun. Let's have fun. Where is actually Blue? He was going at the bottom as he was basically trying to find some trade route, but well, it's here. And <laughs> this could just turn the battle around all. This could turn the battle all around, because so far it did really seem like Vix and were kind of losing, but this could really definitely destroy all the economy from their opponents, and they so far are not noticing. Ah, finally they are, but it's way, way too late, because they have already killed quite, quite a lot of trade, trade cards, and that's pretty horrible <laughs> at this stage, as if they can hold in the attack here, which they definitely can, and this is basically allowing Yuppe, or rather Lavi Head, to go have... Sorry, to have a go at those siege weapons because obviously all the units have been recalled and also killed. Well, this is just so painful to, uh, to watch. This is just so painful to watch for the Jedi. They were having so great game so far, but this can really cost them. This can cost them the whole game. Right now, this is going to be the end for the Radiant, but really the damage has been huge, absolutely huge. And look at how this is allowing also. Uh, Lavi had together with Warrior to go through and into the castles here. Basically, they have killed all the armies from both of them. This is quite problematic overall. Looking at the top, uh, Winchester is doing a pretty good job fighting right now, basically 1v1 against the Chaos to win. And it seems like they are basically at a stalemate, as all those Bombard Towers are going to be helping in the defense quite decently. And I'm not exactly sure what all those teach. Siege Rams are going to do here from Yuppe, as definitely he would need a bit more Mangonels or other Onagers. But well, this is exactly uh, what uh, Winchester needs to push through here. His opponents are building the wrong kind of units. Going back, yeah, the slaughter has been stalled, but all the buildings from Lavi Head are right now coming up in the stables and they are definitely camped right on the battlefield here. But is that going to be really finished? Uh, no, it probably isn't. It could have went about here, that could have been quite surprising. <laughs> Seems like that Yellow is trying to rebuild a bit of a houses or other markets here at the very back. But still, quite a lot of paladins coming through through the bottom here, and they can potentially still keep this alive. But they will, they will be fighting a bit of other years, and that's not a unit that they won't be fighting. Oh, nice friendly fire <laughs> into all those mango dice. Well, 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 that didn't really work out all that well for this each manager. Moving back to the battlefield here, it seems like basically that they are biding their time. Lavi had together with Warrior trying to secure the position yet again with a lot of bombard towers and finally some siege, like siege rams together with trebuchets and they will be potentially making an attempt at those castles very soon. Oh, careful. This is potentially going to be a free shot from Yuppe. No, it isn't. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Quite nice, quite nice, but he's still having all those guys at pretty much the same spot. Not really something that will be too safe, but really a pretty strong claim right now by the green player. And let's see if that's going to be yielding any kind of results. With all those trebuchets and mangurais here, they definitely could. It definitely could. And how's it looking at the bottom? Well, some reinforcements coming in from both Warrior and Lavi Head, and they should be winning the battle if they micro it properly, because if those paladins can go to the top, to the mango dice, uh, whereas the mango dice just get rid of all those harbor gears, that's going to be quite easy job, and yet another raiding on the trade route, this is definitely something that is going to happen, and at the top it seems like the Winchester has finally broken through, and is right now in red's base, even though red is having quite a decent amount of stables, so should be reinforcing very easily, I'm still not seeing it as some kind of easy option, because obviously 
A big problem right now for the Jedi is that Yupei doesn't have all that many buildings here. Just one barracks, a double siege workshop, that's pretty much it. One of three workshops. And that's not really something that you would be all that happy about if you were Chaos to win, because he doesn't have uh, the proper support against all the Halbergiers and all the siege that are right now coming his way. Very nicely top castle, of course, by Winchester. Definitely pretty great help. And yet another siege workshop coming in right here. And this is also yet another problem because of the trade route, obviously. Uh, trade route is right now going to, going to be choked right about here. So they definitely do need to reroute somewhere through the left. Which they already are. But it's a bit of a problem. And well, you can also see uh, yet another attempt to go through. And can they go through? Yeah, they actually can. And it will be yet another Radian at the trade route here. And it actually might be just enough to get rid of all those markets. Because once they do, those... <laughs> Trade cards are obviously going to reroute about here, but that's going to be all that easier to get rid of, obviously, because this is basically just a pocket that's going to be very easy to run into and just wait for the trade cards to come in. So, yep, it's another slaughter with green coming into the battlefield, and in the middle here, two castles already down, and just one to go for the yellow player. And I'm really thinking that's going to be way too easy for a warrior to get there with Lavi head, because obviously, those. The trebuchets are right here and quite nicely defended by the Mangudais from Warrior himself. Moving back to the top, we see a bit more uh, Paladins from Lavi Head coming into the battle here, which is developing into a bit of a 1.5 against 1. As you can also see that Chaos Tuvin is switching into also a Light Cavalry, which, which is basically telling you that he's out of resources, yeah, absolutely out of resources and not having any kind of luck. With the help from his ally, and that right now should be Yupe, but well, he seems to be his hands full at the very bottom, which is definitely not something that Chaos to win. And will be quite happy talking about after the game is ended. Yeah, this seems pretty much pretty much a convincing bit win for the Berserkers at this stage. I don't really see how uh, Chaos to win just by himself could be defending this, especially when once he doesn't have any kind of bombard towers. And here we see the GG's. Yeah, trade route basically leveled and a lot of extra bombard towers basically to prevent any kind of trading for the Jedi team. So this was a pretty decent comeback from the Vicks, as they definitely were losing in the very early game and the Jedi did have a pretty strong upper hand. But, well, the Vic didn't panic and they played their strategy and especially this very nice sneak through the back was exactly what threw the Jedi, of course, and they lost quite a lot of trade cards here, which is definitely something that cost them the game. Well, 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 GG. Let's have a look at the achievements. With Winchester being the MVP. And otherwise, Fist Chivalry most units killed. Well, he was definitely owning the game in the early stage with Hos Mangudais, as he was the first to advance into Imperial and had some pretty strong attack with his teammate Yupe. And well, they did really push Lavi Head into. Rather at the brink of destruction quite easily. A lot of sling at the back. Well, that was at the very end. We have been checking that through the game, and this is really just only at the back. And you can see it was sent to Lavi Head from Winchester basically to back, get her back into the game, as she was having a quite a lot of problems with the economy, uh, having unavailable farms next to her main TC that was under assault for quite a lot of units. The middle of the game. Quite a lot of bullies from Winchester. <laughs> and literally, literally everybody. Well, GG then.